So over the years, I've made several hundred, probably several thousand jokes about the Arizona Coyotes being a poverty franchise, but I never thought when making those comments it would get to this point. You're moving to Utah. This team is actually relocating to Utah. Never in a million years would I would have thought that the poverty franchise in the Arizona Coyotes would actually leave Arizona. I mean, granted, things have not been going this team's way the past couple years. They're playing in a 5,000 seat arena. Of course, that wasn't going to last. They can't get an arena. They can't get land for an arena. Nothing is going this team's way. So I'm giving myself five years to win this team a Stanley Cup, and we're going to try to win as many Stanley Cups as we can in the next five years. Now, I want to say this team has a good core but they really don't i mean you got logan cooley dylan gunther clayton keller nick schmaltz is 27 so i mean by the time this team's ready to compete he's gonna be 33 34 years old he actually might even be 90 years old by the time this team's ready to compete because they never make the right decision when it comes to the defense you got a couple decent young guys here i mean jj moser's not too bad sean jersey's pretty decent soderstrom val Mackey. you got something here meanwhile when it comes to the goaltending connor ingram's not the worst goaltender in the world and vimelka's not necessarily the worst backup in the world but this goaltending tandem definitely has to be better then again in some simulations i have seen connor ingram develop into like an 88 overall goaltender so who knows maybe he's gonna be the goaltender for this team now the very first thing we're doing before we make any trades because obviously we have to make trades in year number one we got to give out some extensions and we got to make sure the young guys are here for the entire rebuild so we're starting with sean dursey and that's gonna be five million dollars for the next four jj moses is gonna be up next here and we're gonna be doing a four by four with him moving on over to barrett hayton we're actually gonna be getting a pretty solid contract done here it's gonna be 2.6 million for the next four years and obviously every single deal i do here is going to be a four-year deal because this is only a five-year rebuild and the soda stump we're going to give you 1.9 for the next four we're not quite done with the extensions yet because val mac i'm going to give you two million dollars for the next four years and then of course jacob voracek 16.7 million dollars for next season this is a must for us then again do i give that to voracek or do i give that to brian little and then give him an eight-year deal eight years at 16.7 million I think that's a steal. I think we might have to do it. So while I try to figure out how I'm going to save the Arizona Coyotes here, I need you to figure out why only 20% of the people watching these videos are actually subscribed. We're trying to hit 62,000 subs. If you don't subscribe, we can't do that. So you should definitely join the family here and subscribe to the channel and go ahead and drop a like while you're at it. So let the moves begin. And of course, if this team's going to win a Stanley Cup, we need Andre Burakovsky. This guy scores big time goals when you need him. And he has a perfect fit on the first line. And that would actually be great alongside Clayton Keller. And the guy we're going to be trading in this package Connor Geeky. Now I watched Connor Geeky play the other day. I was not impressed in Bro in the slightest. I'm going to be completely honest. He wasn't looking that great out there. So Geeky in a third round pick is going to be sent over to the Seattle Kraken and we're picking up Andre Burakovsky. Now granted, Connor Geeky, he's got a ton of potential, but that one game I watched from him, that wasn't it. Then again, I could just be the most unlucky person in the world because I did go and watch Connor Bedard after the World Juniors. Bro picked up, I think, one point and lost to Edmonton. For context, Edmonton won 11 games that season. They beat the Pats and Connor Bedard sucked. So yeah, I think I'm just bad luck. Okay, so I'm so incredibly upset with this move we just made. Matias Michelli is going to be sent over to the Columbus Blue Jackets. We're picking up Marchenko. And you might be wondering, stick on the ice. Wow, L Man's right there having the recording paused. The reason the recording was paused is because I wasn't done setting up the deal yet. I accidentally hit proposed trade. We could have got a third round pick as well as Marchenko. But yeah, that's not really happening here marchenko is coming to the team but yeah we got finessed we didn't just get finessed though we got screwed now, i think this might be the last move for season number one here it's gonna be jack McBain sent over to the chicago blackhawks we're gonna pick up curse and he's gonna be a good bomb six playmaker for us so this is what we're cooking up for year number one here it's gonna be andre burakovsky logan cooley clayton keller on the first line marchenko nick schmaltz and dylan gunther on the second now i think the big struggle here is we don't have an elite playmaker but you know what these guys are gonna figure out how to get it done defensively jj moser sean dursey you're gonna be the top pairing soderstrom valmac you're gonna be the second we have to face facts here this team's not gonna be good we are gonna be a bottom 10 team this season but you know what that's perfectly fine we're building for the future i just want to make sure that these top six guys continue to get better here marchenko's young he's gonna get better we already know dylan gunther's gonna get better andre burakovsky he's probably gonna get better because he is one of the greatest of all time and when it comes to logan cooley we already know he's gonna be an 88 overall by year five now before we get into this season of course marchenko you gotta get an extension it's gonna be 2.5 for the next four so we've done all the trades that we have to we've given out all the extensions we have to we're going to simulate up to the trade deadline and then immediately be sellers because this team's not going to win even if arizona had all 99 overall players we would still find a way to be bottom 10 okay before we even look at the team's record i want to state something we are not this bad the team i constructed is not this bad right here 
22, 35, and 7. We are dead last in the entire league. I refuse to believe there's a team worse than us. Like, this is absolutely embarrassing. This team cannot score, and we know how to allow goals. However, we did know this heading into the season. We knew we weren't going to be a good team, but even this is absolutely unacceptable. Clayton Keller, 53 points. Nick Schmaltz, 44. Andre Burakovsky has 35 points here. Yeah, this team's just an absolute joke. The coach is getting fired. The entire training staff's getting fired. Connor Ingram, you're going to get fired. Yeah, we're going through a massive turnover next season. But why wait till next season? It's time to trade everyone on an expiring contract. So I said I was going to trade players on expiring contracts. We're just going to trade players on bad contracts. Kerfoot, we're getting you out of here. We're taking that third round pick from the Pittsburgh Penguins that Anaheim has. We're clearing up 4.3 million here. That's not the only deal we're doing. Lawson Kroos, where are you? We're trading you away as well. You're getting paid 5.3 million. We got to free up money here. We'll pick up a second rounder from the Anaheim Ducks. That's a good deal. So we just cleared up another $10 million for next season. But we're not done there. Boyd, I'm throwing you in a deal. And Travis Dermott, you're going to be thrown into a deal. We're going to see what we can get for these two guys. They're not coming back next season. Nate Schmidt isn't awful. Like, hear me out here. He's not necessarily young. But he's not necessarily old and he would be an upgrade for our defense here 81 overall he's 32 years old under contract for the next two years actually let's not do that however we basically have to do a deal like that because if not we're going to be under the salary cap floor yeah let's just go ahead and lose every single game for the rest of the year and then get the first overall now i'm not really sure if i should be impressed with the arizona coyotes or disappointed in two other teams san jose i don't understand how you were worse than us and seattle i don't know how you were worse than us as well we were 30th with a 32 40 and 10 record like you two guys should be absolutely embarrassed ain't no way you're worse than the arizona coyotes yeah we're getting a good draft pick here that's all that really matters clayton keller you're leading the way with 68 points that is something and that is something bad when it comes to the goaltending numbers connor ingram you moved up to a 913 to 292 this isn't awful like these aren't good numbers but they could be way way worse look at vimelka's a 902 and a 350 that ain't it i mean that's perfect because we are trying to get the first overall pick here the boston bruins taking down the edmonton oilers in a seven game series now all we have to hope here is we can get the first overall pick if we can get the first overall pick that's going to spark this rebuild we're bringing in a new coach we're going to be an elite team next season we drop to five that's the most fitting thing for the arizona coyotes we're going to ignore that st louis was also number six now i'm not going to lie i really like this guy that was just drafted first overall 82 overall, 18 years old, medium lead potential, of course, and he's a power forward that can play on the left side. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to draft this medium lead potential defenseman, unless he can jump into the line next season. Okay, we actually might hold on to this guy. What I was going to say is we'll draft this defenseman right here and then trade him over to the Montreal Canadiens, and then we'll pick up this guy so we can jump into the lineup for next season. However, our defense is really bad, and a defensive defenseman is going to be pretty useful. All right, so here's the plan. We're acquiring future first round picks that we're going to use in trades for next season. Edmonton, we're going to be picked up your first rounder for next season the one thing that we have to understand with a rebuild like this is we don't have too much time we have four more years to win the arizona coyotes the stanley cup and we were third last in the nhl so we don't have time for developing prospects so here's the next move it's going to be two second rounders and a third rounder over to the winnipeg jets and we're getting the future first so we're going to move on over to the vancouver canucks and two third rounders along with two fourth rounders are going to get us their first round pick for next season and then with our final move all of these draft picks along with the future third is going to be sent over to the pittsburgh penguins i guess we're gonna to have to throw a future second in this deal i didn't really want to but you know what we really got to get another first round pick so here's the rangers second round pick for next season unfortunately that's still not going to be enough here but some of these second rounders do have a bit more value so here's arizona second round pick for next season that has a lot more value and now we're picking up pittsburgh's first so after trading all these picks away we're only bringing in one rookie but you know what that's perfectly fine with me because we're making a ton of trades for next season we're going to be good now we have a ton of players on expiring deals here and none of these guys are coming back not only do a lot of them just have absolutely no potential potential but a lot of them are also very low overalls the only decent player we could actually bring back here is boyd but i don't really want to bring him back to this team if i'm being completely honest and then when it comes to the coaching staff and scouts nobody's coming back there it's a fresh start for this team so we're getting incredibly lucky with the picks we acquired winnipeg's is skyrocketing in value and this toronto second round pick has quite a bit of value so we're going to be picking up this prospect from the montreal canadians for these two picks right here well these two picks in a seventh rounder because as we know the seventh rounder is the most lucrative draft pick in the game here's a 2026 seventh round pick from the arizona coyotes and just like that we got a mediumly potential prospect so we're making one big change to our defensive core here val Mackey, i know i gave you an extension but i didn't plan on picking this guy up from the 
Minnesota Wild. Brock Faber, it's going to be Val Mackey, the first round pick from the Edmonton Oilers. They're going to say no to this deal, but we're getting it done no matter what. Here's a second round from the Rangers, and I think that should be enough to make the difference in a deal like this. So we just picked up Brock Faber, and we got that great prospect from the Montreal Canadiens. Now, before we start making even more trades here, I want to make sure that we have the right guys locked down long term here. So we're going to be starting with Brock Faber. We're going to be doing $4 million for the next three. He's going to keep on getting better here. Another guy that's going to keep on getting better, that's going to be Dylan Gunther. But we're going to hold off on his extension because right now he's wanting $5 million and he's a third line player for us. In the future, he's going to be more than a third line player. But right now, I don't want to commit to a contract like this. So we got a great defense so far with the moves we made, but we need a bit more offense from the defense. And that's what Kevin Korczynski is going to bring to the team here. He's got two years left on his entry level contract two first rounders and two second rounders are being sent over to the Blackhawks. We're getting absolutely finessed in a deal like this, but I'm not too sure if we really are because those picks, they're not going to turn into too much. So the boys are in win now mode. Andre Burakovsky, unfortunately, you didn't have the greatest season here and we have to ship you back over to Seattle in order to get Matty Beniers. We're going to be including a second and first rounder in this deal, but what makes it even more risky, that first round pick is our first round pick. So if we suck this season, then yeah, that's going to be pretty valuable. But you know what? I'm willing to take that risk here. We have traded all these picks that Arizona's acquired away. But you know what? We've built a pretty solid team here. A third rounder is not going to be the difference. But you know what? A second rounder from the Rangers might be. This is a massive package right here. But you know what? If we can get Matty Beniers, it's definitely going to be worth it. So I'm taking out Burakovsky and I'm going to throw this prospect in the deal instead. And now we got Matty Beniers on the team. We're going to give him a deal and then we're going to make some big free agent signings. We've got $27 million to work with. So Matty Beniers, you're going to be coming in at a pretty fair price here. We're going to be doing $5.6 million for the next four years. Considering what you're going to provide to the team, that's going to be an amazing contract. So after giving that contract to Manny Beniers, we have give or take $20 million to work with. So that means we can bring in some guys on one-year deals. Brett Pesci, you're going to be the first player here. It's going to be $6 million for next season. The forward core could use a bit of help here. So Vladimir Tarasenko will give you 9.5 for next season. I highly doubt you're going to accept that contract though, if I'm being completely honest. Stick on the ice legend Alex Wenberg. I'll bring you in on a three-year deal at $2.2 million. Normally after this season, you develop into like an 84-85 overall player. So at that price tag, it's gonna be a great deal for us. After one ridiculous offseason, here's what the team's looking like with our new coach. Nick Schmaltz, Tarasenko, and Clayton Keller are gonna be manning that first line, gain a plus five boost. Dylan Gunther, Logan Cooley, and Marchenko are gonna be scoring a ton of goals here on the second line while they're gaining a plus one boost. The bottom six is looking pretty great here. We're gonna have May Beniers manning that third line along with Andre Burakovsky and the rookie that we picked up from the Montreal Canadiens. While the fourth line, we got an 84, an 82, and an 83. We're in a pretty good spot here. Defensively, we're absolutely fantastic. 86 is across the board when it comes to the right side and to cap it all off we're running back with the same goaltending tandem except connor ingram's way better he's got x factors he's an 86 overall yeah you heard that right connor ingram 86 overall x factors he's gonna be the guy to hoist the stanley cup for us now if we're being completely honest looking at this team we probably should be top 10 in the entire league then again when i looked at that team at the beginning of last season i thought we were gonna be fighting for top 10 in the entire league so yeah who knows what's gonna happen here we're gonna be either top 10 or we're gonna be bottom three no in between i mean comparing this team to last season season we are doing a lot better but then again last season we set a very very low standard for this team the Arizona Coyotes we're not even top 20 in the league right now we're 21st with a 30 29 and 5 record we don't own our first round pick by the way the offense isn't really doing its thing our defense isn't awful though 3.06 where's that person in the entire NHL yeah we're not a top team here actually we are a top defensive team I believe this is seventh in the entire league we just don't know how to score goals but you know what that's going to change when we bring in a new coach next season because the coach we have right now I'm being completely honest that dude's an absolute bum. The offense, not rolling for this team in the slightest. Burakovsky, 11 goals, 41 points. I need more from you. But I think you might be the lone guy on this team with a positive plus minus. Never mind, there's four players on this team with a positive plus minus. I see the potential in this team. Connor Ingram, I see the potential in you. I think the one thing holding us back is coaching. Because coaching has such a big impact in this game, it's honestly a bit ridiculous. Like one day I did a test. What's the difference between A plus coach and A, an A minus, a B, and a C? Yeah, there is quite a big difference. The difference between an A plus and an A coach, 10 wins. 10 wins just based on that. So I think I've had a good enough yap sesh here. What are we going to do when it comes to improving this team? Because we have to face facts. We're not winning a Stanley Cup this season. The three after this is when we make our big push here. But we can't rush the process here. We can't think we're better than what we are. I think we just don't make any trades here. Or if we do make a trade, we just trade somebody on an expiring contract. So we're just going to allow the team to develop here. We're not making any trades. We're going to simulate to the end of the season. If we make the playoffs, great. If we don't, not the end of the world. We're going to be ready for next season though. Now this loss against the Edmonton Oilers might not look like much, but before this loss, we were third in our division. The two teams below us being the Winnipeg Jets and Nashville Predators, they won their final game of the season. 
We lost, we dropped out of the playoffs. That one game meant that much. Now, as we know, that loss against the Edmonton Oilers was massive. 20th in the entire league, missing the postseason by one point. If we lost in overtime to the Oilers, we would have made the playoffs here, but unfortunately, we're going to be missing. The defense definitely wasn't that great to finish out the year, and the offense, still not very good. And what makes it even worse is we don't own our first round pick, which we all know. Clayton Keller, you're leading the way, 70 points. It's a massive step up from last season. Nick Schmaltz, 68. We should have traded Tarasenko. I completely forgot he was on this team. Yeah, we should have shipped him out at the trade deadline. We should have traded everyone on one-year deals stick on the ice was lacking there but you know what we were trying to make a push for the postseason we were hoping for the best with this team unfortunately we didn't see any success and unfortunately Connor Ingram another terrible year I don't really know how much of this I can blame on you though if I'm being completely honest the team in front of you is bad so I can't expect too much from you show to the Vancouver Canucks and Quinn Hughes though because he's going to be taking down the New Jersey Devils and Jack and Luke so the Hughes brothers were matching up with the final and Quinn's coming out on top so we're moving on into the draft here and as we know we don't have a ton of picks to work with but we are going to be selecting this lowly potential playmaker 77th overall so outside that lowly potential prospect we're just going to trade the rest of our picks away and we're getting a second and fifth rounder from the boston bruins now we do have a couple guys to bring back in the re-sign phase the most important being dylan gunther here and hopefully we can get a reasonable deal done it looks like we will be we're going to be doing a four by four with him when it comes to guys like brett pesci vimer tarasenko bukestad kurashev we're probably going to let all these guys walk i just don't see them playing very key parts on our team in the future we could bring vimelka back though 1.4 for the next three he's a good enough backup so i don't blame dylan gunther for not wanting to stay on this team things have not gone good since he's been here so i'm going to give him exactly what he wants just so we can stay on this team after making those re-signings, we do have some extensions to give out, and we're starting with Logan Cooley. That's going to be 7.3 for the next three. When it comes to Nick Schmaltz, I haven't really decided what we're going to do here. He does want 6.2 million, which isn't the end of the world. I want to see where he fits on this team once we bring in a new coach. More than likely, he will be returning, but I just want to see what the line chemistry is looking like. Meanwhile, Kevin Korczynski, 4.4. Don't even need to consider that. That's a great deal. Connor Ingram's a massive question mark. I mean, he's got some X factors here. He's been a decent enough goaltender. You know what? For this price, I'll bring him back to the team. We're going to do 4.2 for the next three. As long as we put a good team in front of them, I think we'll be able to win with them. So for the next three seasons, all the success Arizona is going to see is because of this man right here. McKenzie's coming to the team. Not only is this guy an A+, plus in basically every single category when it comes to coaching, but he has a fantastic team fit with the team, 73%. We are not going to be able to find a coach better than this guy right here. If he joins this team, we're winning three Stanley Cups in the next three years. So we have $25 million in cap space. That means we can bring in some guys on one-year deals here. We're starting with Jacob Slave, and we're going to do 8.2 for next season he's going to be a big left defenseman for us next guy we're bringing back is Vladimir Tarasenko yeah he didn't have a great season with us last year but you know what his asking price is a lot lower 6.3 that's a good deal for him you know what we're bringing back all the guys we had last season Brett Pesci here 6.5 for next season as well we're building a super team here and to cap it off we haven't seen this man in a very long time stick on the ice legend Sam Bennett here's 5.5 for next season that's going to be all the free agent signings and we're winning this team of Stanley Cup there's no question about it so McKenzie's going to be joining the team here we threw this man an absolute bag 10 million dollars per year for the next five he's gonna single-handedly turn this entire franchise around now the new coach is definitely turning this team around nick schmaltz clayton keller dylan gunther on the first line getting a plus three boost all three of these guys have decent enough line fits the second line is going to see nikita coral luke logan cooley and vimer tarasenko holding it down here getting a plus two boost while the third line is going to see andre burikovsky the most important player on this team Matty Beniers, and sam bennett these guys are going to be a really good third line with the fourth line barrett hayton wenberg marchenko they can do their thing yeah the line fits aren't too great here but you know what we got some good enough players down here defensively it's amazing plus five boost plus three boost plus two boost what more could we ask for while well, the goaltending connor ingram you're still in 86 overall you still got two x factors we're gonna see so much success this season that i'm guaranteeing right now we're a top five team top five in the entire league and we basically made no changes to this team all we needed was a good coach and as we know we got three seasons left in the rebuild and with the way this team's looking they might win three stanley cups so let's go ahead, simulate up to the trade deadline, be a 45 win team, then make one or two moves. Now, even after making all the moves we did, the Arizona Coyotes are still frauds here. A 35-23-4 record. The offense is way better this season, and so is the goaltending. I think our offense just has to be a bit better, because defensively, we're actually really good. We might be one of the top teams in the NHL. Yeah, our defense is fourth right now, but where's our offense? I think that's the one thing holding us back. Yeah, we gotta score some more goals here. But even still, the offense isn't too bad. I think we're a pretty well-balanced team. And the fact that everyone on this team is gonna keep on getting better, I think we're in a good spot. Clayton Keller, 56 points. Vladimir Tarasenko, 54 
Bauer. Nick Schmaltz, 52. We got to make sure that we re-sign you because you're playing some top line minutes with the boys. While the goaltending, I mean, Carter Ingram, I can't complain about these numbers. 25 wins, three shots, a 902 and a 288. But then again, Vimoka's doing his thing here, a 922 and a 229. We might have to turn to him when the playoffs come around. So although the team's looking great right now, I do think we need some more scoring. And does that mean trading one of our scores away? Because I mean, a guy like Kevin Fiala, we would keep him for the rest of the rebuild here. Even a guy like Kempe, we keep for the rest of the rebuild. So do we trade Vladimir Tarasenko for one of these guys right here? That might be the play. So whatever you do, do not question what I'm cooking up here. Vladimir Tarasenko, Andre Burakovsky, although you're a legend, you know what? If we can get these two guys here, it's worth making the trade. A second rounder and a first to the LA Kings. We're getting Adrian Kempe and Kevin Fiala, two great scorers. They're going to help the offense on this team a ton. We're going to send this package over. They're saying no. If we have to do two first round picks, I will. But you know what? I think this second rounder might be enough. So there we go. We got Kempe. We got Kevin Fiala. I think we still have enough money to bring back Nick Schmaltz next season. And we'll still have enough money for Adrian Kempe. I think we're doing a great job managing the cap right now. So Adrian Kempe, are we going to be able to keep you on this team? More than likely. We have $17 million in cap space. I'll give you 7.3 for the next four. And then when it comes to Nick Schmaltz, of course, we want to keep him on this team as well. We're doing $6 million for the next six. Unfortunately, that means in free agency, we are going to be losing Slavin, we're losing Brett Pesci, and we're going to be losing Sam Bennett. But we can find some cheap replacements for these guys. And after making those moves, this is what it's looking like. Nick Schmaltz, Kem Fiella, Clayton Keller, then Kempe, Logan Cooley, and Dylan Gunther. Now, we should have no issue scoring goals from here on out. We got way too many snipers on this team. Scoring goals is the last thing we should be worried about. Now, I can happily say that every single problem that Arizona Coyotes have had up until this point is now solved we're fourth in the entire league of 51 25 and 6 record this team's ready to take over the league ever since we acquired adrian Kempe and kevin fiala this team's getting completely different we're scoring more goals and our defense is even better we might have the best defense in the entire league the arizona coyotes the best defense in the league who would have thought clayton keller is going to be showing some great numbers here 80 points 29 goals 51 helpers kevin fiala what'd you do since joined the team i was expecting you to be absolutely elite and you have been 17 points in 20 games meanwhile Kempe, you've been manning that second line what have you been up to only 12 points in 20 games and minus one. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm expecting more. But you know what? If the team's winning games, what can I complain about? And the goaltending, absolutely spectacular here. Connor Ingram, 38 wins, four shots, a 905 and a 284. Now let's see if these numbers can carry over into the postseason. Because this is where things get real. The Stanley Cup playoffs, the Arizona Coyotes haven't been here in a very long time. And realistically, I can't see this team being there in the near future. But you know what? I've turned them around. We're in the Stanley Cup final. Now it's time to win under some new management. Yeah, so we're not going to talk about the first three games and the fact that we basically were scoring absolutely no goals but we scored four goals here and that's all that matters but yeah things are not looking good for the Arizona Coyotes right now are we gonna make a 3-0 series comeback here all we have to do is win game six all right we're following in the first round here but considering what this Arizona Coyotes team looked like the past two years the fact that we were fourth in the entire league and actually made it to the playoffs we'll take that as a win but we have two more years to win Stanley Cups we got to stop taking seasons off so this season was full of ups and downs so the trade deadline things weren't looking that great then we made a big trade bringing in Adrian Kempe and Kevin Fiala and these guys completely turned the team around we ended up finishing fourth in the entire league but unfortunately we lost in the first round. Kempe and Kevin Fiala are both going to be here for next season and they're going to be here the entire season. 90% of this core is coming back we're only going to be losing three players but you know what that's perfectly fine we're going to make some big time moves here and we're going to be ready for next season and we're going to be ready to hoist the Stanley Cup. I'm not going to judge this team on what happened in the postseason we weren't performing nobody was scoring goals here. When it comes to the goaltending Connor Ingram we might need to replace you if I'm being completely honest i'm not too sure if we can win with you you're an 86 overall which is good enough for a goaltender you have good enough poise in 83 but i'm just not too sure if you can be that guy for us all right so drafting prospects here is not going to do us any good unless they have medium lead potential because that means they'll have trade value so we got to trade for picks that we can trade away we gained vancouver's first rounder for the 26th overall this season the next move we're making is two third rounders a fourth and a fifth over to the toronto maple leafs and we're getting their first rounder for next season and then a fifth and sixth rounder is going to go over to the buffalo sabers and we're going to acquire a future third now if we're going to bring back any players i think it's got to be brett pesci i want to do 4.9 for the next two years he has a great fit on the second pairing and he's been a fantastic defenseman for us jacob slavin i know for a fact we're not going to be able to bring you back because you're going to want a bag here i mean six million dollars if we freed up a bit of cap space we would have been able to bring you back but unfortunately that's just not the case here and then sam bennett we're going to let you walk because i'm assuming you want six million as well only 3.1 okay sam bennett 2.9 million for the next two years we're definitely doing that 
So Sam Bennett's saying yes to that deal, and that's an absolute steal for us. But Brett Pesci's saying no, so we're just going to do 5.2 for the next four. Now, Emelin doesn't have a good fit with any of the defensive pairings, so we might as well just trade him away. And we can pick up Evanson. He's a higher overall, 83. He's under contract for the next two years at 2.2 million. This is definitely the right move for us. Ideally, we can pick up some draft compensation in this deal, and it looks like we're going to get a second and third rounder as well. So what Stick on the Ice has done in this video is very similar to the Arizona Coyotes. It's actually kind of fitting. Just take multiple L's. Who would have saw this one coming? The recording was paused so this is what we did we picked up reinbacher from the montreal canadians for two first round picks and we also got a second round for the montreal canadians we then flipped that package over to the san jose sharks and we picked up Caden lidstrom now Caden lidstrom he's kind of elite right now 84 overall 20 years old and he just signed his entry level deal and he has two x factors so i don't know where he's going to play on this team all i know is he's going to help a ton so we're entering the final two years of the rebuild and the arizona coyotes are absolutely incredible nick schmaltz kevin fiello clayton keller a plus five boost a plus two boost is going to be because of Kempe, Logan Cooley, and Dylan Gunther. And then the third line, we picked up Caden Lindstrom. He's already up to an 86 overall. That was such a good pickup. Matty Beniers, Marchenko, a plus two boost here. And then on the bottom line, we're going to begin a plus one. Defensively, we're taking a bit of a step back here. But you know what? Kevin Korczynski and Sean Dursey, I can rely on you guys. Brett Pesci, Evanson, JJ Moser, Brock Faber. This defense is absolutely cracked. And so is this goaltending tandem. Connor Ingram, Vimelka. We're going to be one of the top teams at the trade deadline. Honestly, I don't even know what we're going to do with this team because the forward core is absolutely set. The defense is elite what moves are we gonna make we just might have to rock this team the entire season so this record i certainly can't complain about right here fourth in the entire league a 40 22 and one record the offense is absolutely flying this season it might be the best in the entire league however the defense definitely needs to be better here it's not good but it's not necessarily that bad so with that being said we are going to make one trade here we got to improve the defense the scoring has been elite this season clayton keller 66 points nick schmaltz 61 kem fiala 59 logan cooley 58 kempe 53 those are some great pickups right there well connor ingram 31 wins, four shots, an 897 and a 314. Yeah, this isn't it. We're trading you right now. So it didn't take long to find the guy I wanted here. It's going to be Askarov from the Nashville Predators. $4 million for the next two years, 87 overall. Yeah, he doesn't have the greatest numbers right now, but you know what? I believe in this guy. He can be our number one goaltender. We're going one for one here. Now that's the lone move we're making. We have a fantastic team here, and now we have a fantastic goaltender that's going to keep on getting better. It's time for Arizona to take over the league. So Arizona's locked in this season, even better than last with a 55 24 and 3 record. The offense is pushing four goals per game, while the defense, I do believe it did get a bit better after bringing Ascroft in. The best part about the scoring when it comes to our team is not one guy just carrying the way here. Clayton Keller, 84 points, Kem Fiala, 80, but just look at the scoring depth on this team. It doesn't matter who's on the ice, we're picking up goals. Meanwhile, Ascroft, okay, you have not been that guy since joined the team. I mean, a 906 and a 288 isn't that bad, and you have a 7 2 and 1 record. You know what? I take back what I just said about you. We can rely on you. When I originally saw these numbers, I thought we were cook but you know what you've looked pretty good so far now i just need you to step it up in the postseason and we have a tough matchup in the first round yeah the chicago blackhawks might not have had the greatest record in the world but they do have Connor bedard and that means a lot okay never mind Connor bedard and the chicago blackhawks are frauds we're taking them out in the first round a quick sweep after sweeping the chicago blackhawks in the first round arizona's looking to continue the momentum here but we have a really tough matchup next and this one's actually going to be a tough matchup the dallas stars they were able to take down the colorado avalanche and colorado was one of the best teams in the nhl so we got to be prepared to keep the momentum going now, never in my life did I ever think I would say these words. The Arizona Coyotes have completed back-to-back -back sweeps and they've moved on to the conference finals and haven't lost a single game in the playoffs. That is such a wild statement to say. Now, hear me out. This will be the final season of the rebuild if this team goes 16-0 in the playoffs. And on top of that, if we do go 16-0, I'll buy an Arizona Coyotes jersey. That's right, I'm standing on business here. I refuse to believe this team goes 16-0. Now, unfortunately, the dream of 16-0 is dead here because in game three we're going to be dropping that one five to one but we still have a 3-1 series lead here we're moving into the stanley cup final with a 12 and 1 record that is something for the arizona coyotes i mean that's something for any team but for the fact that it's Arizona is wild to me. So it all comes down to this one final matchup. The Arizona Coyotes taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Can Arizona win a Stanley Cup and then repeat next season? Because as you know, we still got one more year left in this rebuild. Arizona, it's time for you to do the impossible and win a Stanley Cup. Okay, what is this? We made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final and then immediately started losing games here. We have to make a 3-0 series comeback. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Back-to-back -back games where we picked up shutouts. But unfortunately, in game number six here, we're falling to the Tampa Bay Lightning. 
how is this team still good in the year 2027? Like, what are we talking about here? Looking at the scoring of this team, what can I complain about? Nick Schmaltz, 26 points. Clayton Keller, 20. Kem Fiel is 16. I mean, I guess the bottom guys here should be scoring a bit more. I mean, we were absolutely dominating. The first line's really what carried us. When it comes to the goaltending, Askarov, absolutely phenomenal. 14 wins, 3 shots, a 918, a 242. You were absolutely incredible up until the Stanley Cup final. That's when this team fell apart. But you know what? I can't put the blame on you. The entire team needs to step up, not just one guy. So with this season complete, we have one more year left in the rebuild. We're looking to bring back the entire team and then just run it back. This team was absolutely phenomenal. Why would we make any changes? All right, so prospects aren't going to help us. So all these picks are off to the Vancouver Canucks and we're getting their first rounder for next season. And then the next team we're making a trade with is the one that eliminated us in the Stanley Cup final, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Obviously, this isn't going to be enough. I'm basically sending them scraps. So here's the third round pick as well. And I think that should be enough for your first rounder for next season. Unfortunately, they're even saying no to that. Okay, how about I take out this seventh rounder and I give you two third rounders instead? This is going to be more than enough to get that first round pick. And then with that seventh rounder, I guess we can draft a player. Now with the second last pick in the draft here, which player are we going to be picking up? You know what? We're going to go for this lowly potential player right here. He's a goaltender and he actually has lowly potential. Okay, that was actually a really good selection for the 223rd overall. So core luck, you're going to be the only guy we're giving an extension to. And now it's time for us to hoist the Stanley Cup. We're bringing back the exact same team, but we might make one trade because we do have a couple assets we could work with. So this is going to be the lone move we make here. Barrett Hayden's going to be sent over to the Montreal Canadiens along with these two first round picks. And we're getting Slikovs get 50% retained. They're saying no to this deal but you know what since this is probably gonna be the only move we make here i'm going to throw way more than i have to in this deal so here's a second and third rounder as well do you really just not want to retain money on slikovsky i mean like i feel like this is a good deal here's three first rounders in barrett hayden even that you're saying no to that's absolutely wild here's a second rounder as well i don't care what it takes i want to bring a slikovsky here was that a stupid trade absolutely but when does stick on the ice ever make a logical move? Now, if you thought the team was good last season, look at it now. Nick Schmaltz, Clayton Keller, Kem Fiel, a plus five boost. Dylan Gunther, Lone Cooley, Kempe, a plus five boost. Slikovsky, Matty Beniers, Caden Lindstrom, a plus four boost. And then Sam Bennett, Josh Stone, and Marchenko to finish it off on the fourth line. They're getting a plus one boost. The forward core is immaculate here. The defense is incredible with Kevin Korczynski and Sean Dersey leading the way. And then we got Ascroft in between the pipes. But honestly, I think it's a bit disrespectful that this man doesn't have X-Factors. 87 overall elite potential you gotta show him the respect he deserves now i don't know how we're gonna make any trades to the deadline but if we can we will more than likely we're probably just gonna simulate to the end of the season though we really don't have that much cap space to work with so the team you see right now is the team we're finishing with now it's kind of unfortunate in the five years we rebuilt this team we couldn't finish first once we're second with a 55 23 and 4 record the offense is really good right up there with the edmonton oilers but you know we're better than them at defense only allowing 2.7 this team has all the makings of a stanley cup championship team the only thing holding this team back is they're the arizona coyotes and arizona will somehow find a way to lose no matter what. Clayton Keller, 89 points here. Lone Cooley, 81. Nick Schmaltz, 77. The scoring on this team is absolutely incredible. Everyone is holding up their end of the bargain. And Ascroft, 42 wins, 5 shots, a 915 to 248. These are the numbers we need. These numbers right here are winning us the Stanley Cup. Let's get ready for the playoffs. And we're going to have a great matchup in the first round. The San Jose Sharks, this is going to be a nice warm-up for us. All right, so I said this was going to be a nice warm-up for us, but I guess it's not the case here. We split the series so far with the San Jose Sharks, and we're scoring goals in game number five. Nine goals is going to be more than enough. Let's close this out in game six and get ready for the next round. Another nine-goal performance? Okay, this team's locked in. So this team knows how to score goals right now. 18 goals scored in the past two games, and we're looking for that offense to continue against the Dallas Stars. Now, the only issue I have with this team right now is we're way too inconsistent. We scored four goals in these two games right here. Heading into these two games, we had 18 in the previous two and then our next two games right after that we're picking up 11 goals in two games the offense just needs to be consistent here we can't be flip-flopping like this one goal scored here we're facing elimination in game six are the arizona coyotes really going to go five years without a stanley cup it doesn't look like it yet the dreams aren't dead we're moving to game seven so here we go game seven arizona's facing elimination so are the dallas stars man Beniers is picking up the first goal of the game but kalorn's going to be responding for the dallas stars how is this guy even still playing but you know what we're not going to worry about it the third period's going to decide this one and unfortunately we're going to be dropping it we allowed five straight goals that's classic arizona coyotes fashion right there five straight goals from the dallas stars and we're going to be losing this one five to four now it's unfortunate that we weren't able to win a stanley cup in these five years but there's one thing we have to remember you can take the coyotes out of the desert but they're still the arizona coyotes unless they do a complete overhaul with this team they're not going to see any success in utah you got to fire your gm you got to fire your entire coaching staff and more importantly fire the entire scouting department how do these guys not know how to scout players 
All I know is with the two lottery picks they did have, they went completely off the board and they missed on Zach Benson twice. Zach Benson would be one of your top players right now, but instead you took two guys that probably aren't going to make the team for three years. Anyways, stick on the ice is done ranting here. Arizona, good luck in Utah. You're going to need it.